Good afternoon. I'm excited to be here with you all this afternoon. Uh, welcome to the uh, first breakout session this afternoon at our 2020B Women's Conference. I welcome you again. Please, can you just signify that you can hear me clearly? You can send in chats and let me know that you can actually hear me clearly, that you can see me clearly and you can hear me clearly. Okay, thank you so much for doing that. All right then, I'm welcoming you again to the 2020 B Women's Conference and our theme this year is Evolve. Evolve Woman and Evolve We Shall. Um, I hope you've been tuned in since 10 a.m. because we've been having sessions. We've had two sessions already and I'm sure that you're already, you've already been blessed by the two speakers who have who spoke earlier. So now we're diving right into the finance session and today we are going to be focused on budgeting, investing and financial planning. And I will just dive right into introducing my speaker. We have an expert in the house who is going to be handling this for us, Mrs. Shola Adeshaki. Shola Adeshaki is a multidimensional author, speaker and finance expert experienced and versatile chartered accountant with about 18 years hands-on experience on personal and SMEs finance. She's a personal finance coach, trainer, conference seminar speaker. Through her blog and the Smart Stewards Academy, she has helped many men and women bounce back from stress to rest and from debt to wealth. Shola is the managing partner of Booksmart Financial Solutions, uh, an SME-friendly accounting firm, and also the founder and lead coach of Smart Stewards, a platform for teaching sound principles on personal finance management, especially for women. Through the Smart Investment Club, she has helped many Africans, mostly Nigerians, living across the world, jumpstart their journey to financial freedom using investment as a tool, and they have jointly invested over $2 million in just about 18 months. That's fantastic. She has authored eight books, her latest being Fit to Fly Financial Plan. Shola hosts Smart Stewards podcast on Anchor, and she shares quick tips on this platform. She is happily married with children, and she'll be speaking to us this afternoon. And she's an expert, so you can see that we do have an expert in the house. So I'd like to welcome you, ma'am, Mrs. Shola Deshaki. Uh, we welcome you to our platform, to the breakout session today. I'm so excited. I can't wait to hear what you have for us this afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm totally excited to be here. Please confirm you can hear me loud and clear. Yes, I can hear you. Awesome. Thank you. I'm totally excited to be here. I'm mindful of the time. Okay. I have so much to share within such a short period of time, mm -hmm. uh, but I must say thank you, thank you, thank you to the Covenant Nation. I am very grateful. Uh, I count it as a privilege to be here. And thank you to my sister, Pastor Tony Pojo Imadi as well. I will dive right into my presentation. It's a lot, but trust me, when we talk about finances, it's not something we can even finish in a day, but I am hoping that um, yeah. Within the few minutes I have, I would be able to share some wisdom with you and would be able to interact. And I know that you would have an amazing time. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing my slides. And um, yes, we got it. So uh, my topic for today is budgeting, investing, and financial planning for today's woman. Mm -hmm. I totally like uh, the theme, be very instructive. You just be. And I want to share a story with you from an animal, some instructive wisdom that I got studying about a particular animal. But we're going to get into that in just a short while. Um, I've been introduced already. I just like to mention that um, I am an author of about eight books. My books are available all over Nigeria and on Amazon in uh, paperback as well as Kindle editions. Okay, so today, the anchor scripture for my presentation is seen from Proverbs chapter 31, verse 16. And it says, she considers a field mm -hmm. and buys it from a profit. She plans a vineyard. Very instructive. We are going to dissect this real quickly, but I want you to just take note of that scripture. She considers. Now, another translation says, she looks over. Now, when you consider something, you're considering First of all, in your mind, you would agree with me. Now, what a lot of us do when it comes to our finances is to take action based on what people are doing, based on what people are saying. 
But this very short verse of the scripture talks to us about the Proverbs 31 woman. And it says she first of all considers. Now she has a conversation with herself in her mind. And then from her prophets, she plants a vineyard. Now when you plant a vineyard, you know what that means. You're planting something that has the capacity and the potential of returning economic benefits to you time and over again. But this is not where I'm going. I just thought to mention that. Okay, now these are a few things I'll be sharing within this short period of time. And I hope that um, we would have an amazing time together. Now, before I start, I would like us to interact just for a few minutes. I have a, a few questions. Uh, needless to say that I know almost everybody listening to me this afternoon must have attended either a seminar, a webinar, or a movie regarding finances. Do you agree with me? For some of us in this month of September, this is about the sixth or seventh financial related webinar that we attended. Am I right? Yes. But the issue is we attend all of these webinars, we read all of these books and we're still struggling, we're still having issues with our finances. What is the reason? Now, I need you to look at my screen and answer a few questions and kind of place yourself in some of these things I'll be reading out. Now, when we talk about finances, when we talk about money, what are the beliefs that you have as an individual? Number one, I am not gifted enough to make much money. Do you find yourself thinking like that sometimes? Only a few people can truly be rich. I am not good with money or figures. I am a chartered accountant and I qualified about 18 years ago. But for a better part of my career, I found myself saying I am not good with my finances all of the time. Okay? Now, some of us would say, no, money is not easy to come by. I want you to go into the chat box and tell me some of the things that you do or you think when it comes to money issues. Now, somebody, some people would say, oh, more money would make me happy. I'm happy right now, but when I have more money or more assets, I'll be happier. Now, some people would say my background is a limiting factor. Now, some people would say I am not capable of making more money. Now, these are beliefs that are rooted in our minds. Now, these are common mindset beliefs that we have. Now, I know you want me to start to talk about savings and investment, but like I said, you have heard all of those talks many times this year. I'm gonna talk about them, but let's address some very critical and fundamental things as we talk about finances. Now, some people would say, I am not caught out for business. I said that a lot, you know what, in the past, because all I considered to be business was Maybe I go to the UK, I go to the US, I go into a large store, I buy a couple of things, I bring them to Nigeria. When I come to Nigeria, I sell them to my friends, to my church members, and they're not paying up. And I get so discouraged. And I would say, no, business is not my thingy. How many of you are like that? You'd be like, no, I'm not caught up for business. But that was then, look at me, I'm doing business now. But for about 10 years, post-qualification, I kept saying, no, you know what? My strength is in my ability to think and execute, but not for business. Now, some people would say it takes money to make money. Now, some people would say, oh, the rich get richer, keep getting richer, and the poor get poorer. Now, some people would say, this one is very common, right? Money is the root of all evil. Now, do you find yourself in any of these phrases that I just, <laughs> that I just read out? Number two question. I need you to go into the comment section and tell me what you think. Now, when you talk about money or when people are talking about money, when you think about money, what emotions do you have? Example, fear, ecstasy, uncertainty, abundance. Tell me in the section, in the comment section, I'm going to just read a few and then I will dive into my presentation. So when we talk about money, like right now we're talking about money. What do you think? What's, what's, the, what's, what's, what's going on in your mind? What's your fundamental belief about money? Now, I quickly just want to read through the top chat and just one. Somebody says peace, uncertainty, fear, uncertainty. It's fine. Now, it's fine to feel anyhow. The reason I'm here today is, you know, within just a short period of time, I want to see if we can interact with a level of wisdom that would make you change some of those beliefs that you have. Now, it's not something I can do all by myself today in 30 minutes, but I just want to lay a foundation and give you some assignment to do so that you can understand the things that you need to actually tackle and deal with 
when we talk about financing or finances. See, I could start with, okay, you have to save 10%. You have heard all of those things. More often than not, all the time. Today, you have read books, you have gone for courses, but you are still not making a headway when it comes to your finances. So somebody says indifference, fear, uncertainty. Thank you, thank you. Yes, we are women. We are learning from one another. Somebody says I get intrigued. I want to know more. All right, awesome. So I'm going to go on in my presentation. Now, in the world of coaching, there's a concept that we teach, and it is called the be do have mentality there's no time but let me quickly break this down now what a lot of us do is you want to have you want to have money now you want to save you want to invest now those are action points the most important thing and the most important place to start from is who exactly you are now i asked a few questions just a few minutes ago and i'm reading up the comments and i'm like wow, wow yes this is who you are when it comes to money indifference, fear, uncertainty. Now, as long as those things are in your mind, there would always be that limiting factor, that limiting belief, that thing that makes you feel, no, I'm not caught up for business. No, money is not my thing. Oh, only a few people can be rich. I would like for you to read more about this mentality, this be, do, have mindset, because it is the foundation for whatever you would like to do or achieve when it comes to financial success. If you remember the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, there were three guys. One got five talents, one got two talents, the other one got one talent. And the Bible says the first two people went to work immediately. Now the third person that got just one talent. Now, did you see some of the things he said? I was afraid, right? Emotions. That was his money beliefs. He was afraid, he was... Um, insecure, and then he started to even blame the master. Somebody gives you a gift, and then you're blaming him. You're saying that because I know you're a wicked person. You're always wanting to reap where you have not sown. That was who he was. The question is, I know you want to be financially free. I want to be financially free as well. I am on that journey, and I know a lot of us are on that journey. But see, financial freedom is, first of all, something that you have in your mind. Financial success is who you are. And I, I like the fact that I'm talking to believers. He says, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or imagine, imagine, not just what we say, not just what we do, not just the action points, not just, oh, save 10% or invest. It is about you, your mindset. And my number one assignment this afternoon is to get you to see the reason you need to have a good mindset about money and about every other area of your life. So we have established some of the beliefs we have, and I'm encouraging you this afternoon, you need to ditch those limiting beliefs. You need to believe that. You know what? Money is a tool. It is in abundance. A lot of us say, hey, money, oh, money doesn't grow on trees. But why is it that people keep getting richer? Some, I mean, you know about the news that trended on social media a few days ago. Or ten dollar bought uh, Ferraris for his daughters, and then there were a whole lot of mixed um, emotions, mixed reactions. Some people were blaming their parents, and a whole lot more. I could see through people's mindset. So a lot of us, we need to, the, the the first place to start from. Yes, I'm going to talk about savings and investing, but if you do not have the mindset right, if you do not get it right in your mind that you know what. Money is in abundance. Some people are getting richer. We are saying somebody is buying Ferrari for his Ferrari is for his daughter. We are talking about people who this season of COVID has made much money. I, for an example, this has been my best year in terms of revenue. Some of us are still focusing on the disruption. Oh, this has happened. This is not a good year. But I tell you, your mindset has a very critical function to play when it comes to money. So B, do have. B, have the right mindset about money. Money is meant to help you live an amazing life, just like oxygen, just like um, air, just like some of these things. Money will, and it's, it's in abundance because the truth of the matter is literally, we brought nothing into this world and we will take nothing out of it. So the money game is what we play right here on earth. 
you have to make up your mind that you're going to play it right. You're going to get the literacy. You're going to do everything it takes, okay, to live an amazing life. So let me just quickly read this. It says, first, you have to be what you want, wealthy, rich, successful. Then you do things from that place of your being. And then what you are doing will bring you the things you have. It's okay to want to be wealthy, but don't, you know, you are going about doing all of the, I want to save 10%. The truth of the matter is, let me ask you a question. From the money you are saving right now, you are earning 100,000, you are saving 10,000 per month. Would that get you anything? Would that get you anywhere? Literally, maybe not, but it is just about forming the right habits, right? And doing the right things that would get you to a place of success. I see people who are saying, no, I can't save now because I'm earning just 80,000. And you're saying, save 8,000. 8, no, they will say, when I earn 800,000, I'm going to save, you know, 80,000 then. If you do not have the right mindset, cultivate the right habits now, when the money comes, you're not going to use it well. So um, just take a screen grab of this, of this um, page and go read about Be, Do, Have. It starts from who you are, okay? So let's go on in this presentation. A few other things I would like, to, like for you to know about money. Personal finance is 20% knowledge and 80% habit. Like I said, if we should count the number of webinars we have attended about money this year, I'm sure more than ever before, you do not even have a choice. Everybody is like, oh, there's a webinar here. And because this is something you can do from the comfort of your home, you are attending, you're jumping from one webinar to another. Some of us are actually knowledge constipated right now because we have so many, you know, sources of information. Personal financial success, according to Dave Ramsey, is first of all, the habits. How many of you have read the book Atomic Habits? It's a book that I would encourage you to read among some other books I would mention. It is not just the knowledge. The knowledge is here. The truth of the matter is, is the knowledge translating to something that will change your mindset and that would help you take the right habits. It's about habits. Number two, your personal financial success is your responsibility. A lot of times you are blaming people. Oh, my mom. Oh, she didn't teach me well. Oh, my husband. Oh, my children. Oh, the kind of friends I move with. They are the ones. Not, uh, because I coach people. These are the things I hear all the time. You're talking to people about their finances. They're saying, no, my father did not raise me well. I mean, my father did not provide the right opportunities. And those were some of the things we read on Twitter. Oh, my father did not do well. And that's why he wouldn't have been able to buy me a Ferrari. You are 35, you are 37, you are 40. You are still blaming your father. Take responsibility. Okay? Now, money is a means of exchange. And money grows towards value. Now, some people see money as, ha, ah, money, money, this money. And you're like, hey, when will I make this money? Money is only a means of exchange and it gravitates towards value. I like to tell people that wherever there is value, there will be money. And let me tell you the truth. Money is much more than cash. Because there's no time, I like to teach that there are five C's of money. Credibility, competence, character, credible contacts, and then cash. Cash is actually the least. Some of you have friends that if you are in a dire need and you call them, they will be able to bail you out. I have friends like that. I have friends that I can say, you know what? Give me two million till tomorrow or the day after. I'm going to return it to you. Now, at that point in time, I do not have the cash, but somebody is making the cash happen for me. Now, that's what you, have, what you call credible contacts. The question is, do you have people that can bail you out like that? Now, competence is another thing that can stand in as cash for you. Okay, character, but I don't want to go into that because that is not the meat of this conversation. Okay, um, I will touch on the difference between your discretionary income and your disposable income as we go on. Again, let me quickly mention that there are three things to do to money. All of the savings, investing, and all of that that we talk about, just three things. You make it, you manage it, you multiply it. Three things, and this is what I like to say is the original MMM. Don't lie. Now, how many of us did MMM when it happened? I think it was about three years ago. How many of you did it? Go into the section, into the chat section and tell me, did you do MMM? Now, have you done any of those Ponzi schemes that will tell you you can get 300% in like one month? 
We are sisters. We are, we are, we are, you know, we are just encouraging ourselves. So there's no reason to be shy. Okay, now this is the original MMM. You make money, you manage it, and you multiply it. I'll break it down as we go on. Now, making is a function of you putting your value to the table, you preferring solutions to the needs of people, and then money flowing towards you. Now, the skills for making money are different from the skills for managing money. Some people can make money quite well. They have the skills, they have the talents, they're doing business, but they do not know how to manage it. I'll give you an example. I know we are ladies, but I, I, I like to give the example of Rashidi Yekini. How many of you remember Rashidi Yekini of Blessed Memory? That footballer. I, I followed the story up until, until his death because I used to like football back then. I remember that Rashidi Yekini was, of course, the first person that scored the first goal for Nigeria in our very first World Cup. But did you know that about five or six years ago, he died in penury in Ibadan and he was depressed. I liked the guy a lot and his story was so touching. But you still see contemporaries like Okocha. Okocha is still very relevant, not because he's so handsome or he speaks good English, but because, you know what, people like to gravitate towards people that have money. And even the Bible says that a rich man has many friends. The guy is still very relevant. Why? He probably has skills to manage money. Some of us earn money. We, earn, we, make it, we know. I coach people and they always say, you know what, coach, the problem is not with me earning money. I make money, but I do not know how to manage it. And of course, the third one is multiplying money. I like to use this example and let me quickly, you know, give you an illustration. If you live in Lagos, Nigeria, where I live, and you're dependent on government water, you know, sometimes it could be very epileptic in supply. Now, you haven't had water for like three weeks, and then water suddenly comes. Everybody in the house, like Nepa, you know, you're happy. Oh, water has come. Now, you turn on the tap. Now, do you leave the tap running just like that without putting a bucket there? Now, making money is synonymous with the tap flowing. Managing money is synonymous with you putting a bucket, right, to receive the water because, you know, this water is not always available. Now that we have it, we have to do what? We have to manage it. Now, multiplying money is you realizing that now one bucket is full. Are you just going to close the tap? No. You keep pouring from one bucket into another bucket. You keep pouring from another bucket into another drum, right? To ensure that even when the water stops flowing, you have an abundant supply of water for yourself and your family. Now, do you get that scenario? Does it explain truly and thoroughly the concepts of making managing and multiplying money. I still have a lot to say and I know I do not have so much time, but let's go on. Now, remember that when I started this presentation, I told you that I learned something from an animal. Honestly, I didn't know there was an animal called the beaver, or maybe I knew, but I just took time to study because I looked at the thing and I'm like, bee, bee. And then, you know, during the course of my study, I, I stumbled on this animal called the beaver. There's no time, I'm giving you the number two assignment. After this program, you go and learn about the beaver. Now, for the purpose of this class, remember I talked about the importance of having the right mindset. And I'm going to talk about a few points I like to teach with acronyms. And of course, my acronym for today is beaver. I'm going to touch on the mindset issues and the the values and the characteristics that you need to have in attaining financial freedom and then the practical things. Are we still together? Are you learning something? Put it in the chat section. Let me see what you know you have been up to and tell me one thing that you have learned so far. Very mindful of my time. I have just a few minutes more. Now, what I learned from the life of a beaver that should help us channel our energy all right and have the right mindset towards money and business and everything we do. B, now before I talk about the beaver, let me quickly explain, you know, the characteristics of the, of the beaver. Now, a beaver is a rodent, a big rodent actually, that chops down trees and builds dams. If you have your Google, your phone around you, you can quickly Google to see a beaver. Now, what amazes me from the life of the beaver is that the beaver, has a very sharp set of teeth with which, and I'm going to show you some pictures now. 
I'm trying to just help you understand and glean from the life of a, of a beaver that if an animal could have such amounts of tenacity of strength to do multi-dimensional things, then you as a woman, I as a woman, can do amazing things when it comes to our finances, not just for ourselves, but for our families, for our nation, and for the world at large. Now, a beaver is a big rodent that chops down trees and builds dams using its teeth. Amazing. They build dams on rivers, right? And they use the same feet. I'm going to show you some pictures, okay? To build dams from trees. They're good swimmers. They, they can stay underwater for as long as 15 minutes. They have a broad tail. They have a poor eyesight, but keen senses of hearing, smell, and a torch. A beaver stick grows continually, so they will not be worn down by chewing on wood. I know somebody is thinking, hey, what has beaver got to do with finances? I will show you in just a short while. And beavers continue to grow throughout their lives. Now, look at this first picture. You see that there's been a bit of um, 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 like a scraping. Can you see? Now, this was not done by a human being. This was done by an animal. This is the first stage. Now, look at this second stage. This wasn't a cutlass. This wasn't a machinery. This was a beaver doing this. Now, a beaver is bold, and a beaver is a believer. Today's woman, a believer, do you have that mindset, like I already said, that you can be successful with your finances? You can make, manage, and multiply money. Are you bold enough? Let's go ahead. So B is for bold and belief, the right mindset. Number two, empower John Educator. Look at it. How can you use your teeth? Imagine it. Some of us, you know, we have so many excuses on why we cannot do business or why we cannot be successful. Remember I said enough of pointing figures at your parents, at your spouse, at your children, at your employer. Some people even blame an employer, their employers. You are the one who has taken your application to go work there. If you think they are not treating you right, then leave. But you are blaming them every day. E empowered and educated financial literacy. We are going to get into the action points, but if you want to become successful with your finances, again, you have to start from being. And being is a function of what you know. Some of us spend so much time on the internet, we do not learn or we do not read up what is important. You want to become rich, but you don't want to, be, you don't want to educate yourself on the importance of finances and the things that you need to do. Let's go on. Now, A, look at the third process. Can you see where we started from? Now, look at the beaver using its feet, set of feet, to achieve and accomplish this. Active, actively working at it, actively working on your finances, actively having a, an accountability group, actively having people that would help you achieve your financial goals. Who are the people you are working with? Are you accountable to anybody? Now, these are things that, like I said, are meant to address our mindset. I'm going to go into the practical side real quick. Are you learning something from the beaver? Do you think it's, it's an animal that is worth studying? Hmm. Now, this is the beaver. The beaver is not even as tall or as big as a human. Now, on the right side, you see, this is an example of a dam that a beaver has done. How can an animal like this, using just the power of its feet, build a dam such as beautiful and as big as this? Read up about the, 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 about the beaver later, but the V is that a beaver is versatile. You can be multidimensional. Yes, I know that they say that um, master of none, right? What's, what's the quote now? Help me. Um, I can't remember that quote now. Uh, something I mean, of all talents, master of none. I'll remember before I finish. But versatility in this day and age is very important. You have to be versatile when it comes to your finances. You are getting the knowledge, you are putting in the action, and then, you know, and then the final two is energetic 
and eager. If you want to be successful, remember the theme of this program is be. And we are looking at the life of a beaver and we are taking a cue from some of the things that the beaver does in achieving its goals. Energetic, eager. Some of us, you want to pay a finance coach that can help you attain financial freedom. You want to pay somebody who can just help invest. You are not interested. I have never seen a rich person who says, I do not have a knack for figures. They know, even though they outsource some of the things they do to outsiders, but they are very much interested. They are eager to learn. They are eager to put in their money in different forms of investment and all of that. And of course, they are relational and resilient. Collaboration. Collab this is an age where you have to collaborate with people and you must, have a, 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 you must have good relational skills when it comes to your finances. Now, let's go into the main thing which I know you would like to learn. But again, like I said, it is not just about the action. Action, I want to say. And that's why I took time to explain the importance of having the right mindset. And learning from the life of a beaver, some of those characteristics that you should seek to have. So that you know what? You are, first of all, you have, first of all, become, which is the being, then you do. Now, these are the things to do before you have, okay? So this is the second set of acronym, and these are practical things talking about your finances. Now, the first thing is budgeting. Let me just run through it. Budgeting, B, expenses, E, A, accumulating assets, V, v savings and investing, E, any more money, and being return oriented. I'm going to dive into that real quick. Budget, 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 budget. I know this is a word a lot of people do not like to hear or use. When you talk about the word budget, people think like, no, you are trying to restrict me. You don't want me to spend money. But a budget, if you live in Lagos, Nigeria, where I live, a budget is just like a navigator. I am so addicted to budgeting. Even if I'm going to the other street or the other place or the, the other road or somewhere that should take me not more than 10 minutes, I check my Google Maps because I don't want to get stuck in traffic. That's what a budget does for you. And there's a general rule of thumb that say, oh, did I say rule of thumb? Oh, so there's this, <laughs> this concept of 50, 30, 20% rule when it comes to budgeting. Now, 50% of your income should go into your needs, the things that are necessary for survival, right? Example, your housing, school fees, feeding. 30% of what you earn should go into your wants, and 20% should go into your savings. I bet you have heard or read about budgeting, but I do not want to spend so much time on it. It is very important. You must be able to plan. When I was you know, starting out my journey to financial freedom, one of the things I would do was to write out how I spent my money after spending it. But you must understand that if you want to have a headway with your finances, you must plan before. It just gives you like, you know, an idea of what you're earning what you have to take care of and how. Okay, now the E talks about expenses and it's uh, like a continuation of the budgeting. You need to understand that there are things you call needs to have and nice to have. Okay, needs to have, like I already said, are things like, that are very critical and necessary for survival. I mean, it differs from person to person, but they're critical things that we all share in common. E.g., mortgage, rent, right? Children's school fees. No matter how good you are in terms of parenting, you have to take care of your children. Your children won't say, oh, dad, you've been so good, mom, you've been so good. We won't, be we won't be hungry in the next three days. No way. Those are critical things that you need to take care of. So your needs to have and your nice to have, those are your wants. You need to take care of yourself as well because you just realize at the end of the day, you keep, you know, before you get your salary into your hands, everybody's doing like this, from the government to, you know, service providers, your landlord, everybody is doing like this. And you are the one working. You just realize you're 50, you're 60, you haven't taken good care of yourself. So as a personal finance coach, I tell people, mark out something to take care of yourself at least once a month. Give yourself a treat. Okay, it is important. And then the next uh, A, the A, remember I'm talking about the practical side using BEAVER as an acronym. Accumulate assets. Women, an asset is something that has the potential of returning economic value to you. Example, you have a house that is giving you rental income. 
You do mutual funds, you buy stocks, they're returning dividends and returns to you, right? Those are examples of assets. Now, when you buy a bag, I'm not saying don't buy a bag, is that an asset? No, that's an expense because it doesn't have the potential of returning economic value to you. But when you buy a mutual fund or you buy, uh, say, a property, then it has the potential of returning economic benefit to you. I encourage you, ladies, let us buy more assets. Let us invest in assets, okay? Assets would improve your network. A, the next A, avoid debt. B, C, you know what they call B, C, in my own dialect. It is very critical. I know that I'm not even going to go into the issue of good or bad debt. But if you are borrowing money to fund your lifestyle, then there's an issue. No, please live within your means. Part time, as they say, life is in phases, right? Men are in sizes. Men are, I mean, we are all on a journey. Some of us, we are not where we used to be. We are still on that journey. And as we practice some of those things, they will come handy. Debts are not good for you, okay? So I need to round off now. Let me just give you the final. Um, so I've talked about B, right? E, A. Okay, so V now, savings and investment. Saving is simply putting money aside from your income on a regular basis. Whilst investing is putting that money to work. A lot of people will say, okay, but I'm saving. I can't make a headway out of it. Saving is just the habit of putting the money aside. Investing is putting the money to work. We're going to take questions and answers, and I'll be able to talk more about that. But there are different asset classes that you can invest in. Equity, cash, and cash equivalents, real estate, alternative investments, and many more. I will talk about that when we start to talk about, when we go into the question and answer session. Finally, earnings, right? Read the cash flow quadrants. It talks about four different ways by which or from which you can earn money. And then the R, oh, where's my R? Beaver, R, R, return oriented, be return oriented. Now, when you're putting your money in something, be sure you're asking the necessary questions. What is in this for me? How long? How soon? You know, but I know that already I'm seeing some questions here. We will talk about some of the practical aspects of these things. And, you know, that's it. Thank you for having me. I have a couple of books. Yeah. That I want to, you know. Uh, Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Adesha Kim, because our time for question has actually reduced to 10 minutes now. Oh, wow. So um, okay. we'll just, it will be good that we just dive in because we already have a lot of questions that we have been collecting already before the uh, program. So right. there's actually a lot of questions, but I doubt we'll be able to dive into all of those questions. But we will take as much as possible before we call it um, a day because after this session, we're going right into the breakout session two that is also supposed also supposed to start immediately. So I'm going to start with the first question here. Uh, it would be good if we can just quickly just run through them and see as much as we can take. Fantastic. So the first question that I have, thank you so much for that session. In fact, now you have made me to be so interested in studying the beaver myself because immediately I started going to Google to, I mean, start reading some things on the beaver. So it's one assignment that I'm going to really take seriously and that I would do. Thank you so much for that session, ma'am. So the first question I have here is what type of short-term and long-term investment will you suggest for a young woman starting out with few hundreds of Naira to invest with? Okay, awesome, good question. Uh, let me take you to my slide on investments. Just uh, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now there are four things you need to consider when it comes to investing. Okay. Your financial situation, your mm -hmm. goals, your mm -hmm. age, and your risk temperament. Mm -hmm. More often than not, many of us, because our friends are investing in a particular thing, you also want to do it. Forgetting that your age, there are age differences. Your goals are different. If you have a child who is ten already, you know that. University is staring at you in a few years, right? You can't be doing what someone who doesn't have a child is doing in terms of investment. Now, these hmm. are classes of investment you can consider. Equity, example, stocks. The good thing is that in Nigeria, if you are still young, you want to invest in equity. Within Nigeria, outside hmm. of Nigeria, uh, in Nigeria right now, using some apps, you have access to mutual funds in the US. You have access to some of the equity um, equity stocks in the U.S. that you can buy. So if you are young and you're starting out, I'll advise you get literacy on equity. Mm -hmm. That is 
high risk usually, but high returns, and it is long term. Mm -hmm. Somebody who mm. is 65 cannot go and put their money in equity to say mm. because ah, sometimes they say it is high return, but you still have time. So that's mm. why I said you need to consider your age. Of course, mm. your financial position, but basically to kind of develop your investment muscles. Okay, mm. start with things like cash and cash equivalents. Mm. Uh, right now, the rates are not impressive in Nigeria because of, you know, uh, so many things. Inflation is about 13% and yeah. the rates are about 2%. But again, yeah. it's a good way to just start out if you have, mm -hmm. well, few hundreds, like you called it. Yes, so few equity, the truth of the matter is you can save money aside constantly, constantly, mm -hmm. and start to build on it, okay? You mm -hmm. might not be able to do real estate right now, but by yeah. the power of collaboration, you might be able to do some things with your friends as mm -hmm. you, know, you constantly put money aside. But for now, mutual funds, like cash and cash equivalents, Okay. Fixed securities like bonds, federal government bonds, mm -hmm. those ones are low risk, yeah, low returns, but the truth of the matter is some of us still need to build our investment muscles for starters. And um, in recent times, there have been a lot of alternative investments such as agro-allied that you might want to do. I encourage you also, I, I run an investment club and what we do is to provide investment and financial literacy and opportunities. So yeah, get so yourself into the group of people that can also help you achieve your financial goals easily. So for that yeah. person, cash and cash equivalent and equity because you're still very young. Okay, so how much of my income should actually go towards housing? Now, um, under the 50, 30, 20% rule, housing mm -hmm. comes under 50, which is a need, okay. right? 50, yeah. uh -huh. So 50% will take care of your housing, take mm -hmm. care of your feeding and other mm -hmm. necessary things. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's up to you to now say, okay, I have 50% going into my needs. You do the calculations. Hmm. Does it work for you? You know what you are paying as rent. Exactly. You, know? so you, you need to do the calculations to say, will this suffice? Now, those are just examples of percentages. For some of us, we may have to tweak it around. It's not yeah. every time you're, you're, you're buying things for yourself. So sometimes 50% may go into your needs, 40% may go into your savings and investment, and 10% just for you to splurge. But it you depends. Your, yeah, you know, so, your so, so it actually depends on where you are, or maybe what your needs are, or what you are facing, exactly. because it's always different for everybody. Yes, right. so let me just I want to cover as much. I mean, I have a lot of questions, but I know that we cannot cover any of all of these questions. What mm -hmm. I would advise a lot of our listeners is you can always go to um, Mrs. Shola Deshakin's page, she's on Twitter, she's on LinkedIn, she's on IG, and you can also check her out um, um, on the internet on her website so if you want more details on that you can do that on your own we will not be able to answer some of those questions you may actually do a bit of digging and researching yourself on linkedin about her and twitter yes i have another question here there's this advice given by some older women to us younger ones um <laughs> on not disclosing our actual financial worth to our husbands wow. Thus, I would like to ask if it is okay for a woman to not disclose her actual financial strength, including investments to her husband. He knows about their existence, but not the true and complete details. What are your candid thoughts about this, Mark? Thank you. Beautiful question. So the yeah, very brilliant. That was why I wanted to take it. A very brilliant <laughs> the question. The dynamics of every marriage differs. You know yourself, you know your husband. Ideally, yes. you're supposed to be transparent. Yes. After all, the Bible says they were naked and they were not ashamed. Hmm. But because of time, I, I wrote a free ebook recently. I, I think if you follow me on social media or send an email, we have a, free, a collection of free ebooks, and one of them is what I called Your Money, Our Money, My Money. And hmm. I, I discussed eight things that we need to consider as couples when it comes to finances. Hmm. Now, if I tell you what applies to me, it might not apply to you. As a coach, I have intervened in cases where a guy knows what the lady is earning, he's not working, and then he is terrorizing her in terms of this has to come to me. I actually didn't know somebody who sold his wife's property behind mm -hmm. her back, okay? Mm -hmm. I've known of cases of joint accounts that have gone bad where one party was the one depleting the accounts. So mm -hmm. if I say this is the way to go, but ideally, as Christians, we are supposed to, we are supposed to be open with one another. Exactly. But, Take that with a pinch of salt because your dynamics differ. Now, if you have a spouse that is very considerate, there's, there's no need hiding some of these things from yourself. Yes, I know some of our mothers had experiences 
with our fathers that, you know, kind of painted their approach to life about finances. But I tell you, some of those things are not biblical. I have an husband that is quite um, understanding. We share things. We actually budget together. We talk about some of these things. So I don't have an issue with it. I, I don't think he's in any way intimidated by what I make. I'm not mm -hmm. intimidated by what he makes. So we yeah. can share some of these things. So number one, understand your husband. Yeah. Understand each other's temperaments. Yes. Some people are natural, naturally spenders. Some people are naturally savers. Now, yeah. if you don't understand the other person, you're likely to always be at loggerheads because somebody always would want to spend, the other person would want to save. Now, those are some of the things I discussed mm. in that free ebook. Go on my social media. I think there's yes. a way you can download you, uh, So the title of the book, again, is your, My Money, Your Money, your, Our Money. Your Money. Your Money, Our Money, our money My Money. My Money. Okay. I, and I your also, money, I, I talked money. about the dynamics of uh, joint accounts. I don't practice joint accounts. I practice project accounts. I make my money, yeah. you make your money. When then we, we have, put it towards a project. We put it together together for projects as they arise because i've seen joint accounts causing troubles in yes. homes. so again it is a function of you understanding your spouse and communicating yes okay? talking i i cannot fully you know answer the question but know yes. your husband communicate yeah. understand your temperament plan for the future have there's the one thing that i'm taking away from what you just said ma'am it is right. that part of know who you are married to right because you cannot you cannot use another person's spouse to judge your own spouse mm -hmm. so you have to know the individual what is their disposition to money right. what is their belief about a woman making more money than them mm -hmm. what is and you know all of those things are very important in how we can manage you know our relationship so that at the end of the day money is not causing any underlining issues in our homes and our marriages and we need I to really, communicate we need to talk 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 about talk, money. Talk, 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 talk. Right. Yes, I wish we could go on and on. We are going to send these questions to you, ma'am, and you right. would help us answer them by email so that we can post out to people. I've been asked to round up because the next session is about to start immediately. I wish we could go on and on and on, but I've had a very wonderful time. I have my notice full. In fact, I've jotted down a whole lot of things from you and I'm going to be going to your site to, to read your eBooks and to study myself. So I would advise everyone tuned into to do that. Thank you for tuning out this afternoon. And um, the second session is about to start. Then you just um, um, log on with Mrs. Shola Deshaki for a very Thank insightful you. session. God bless you, Ma, Thank you for, for honoring me. our invite. And it has been very insightful. God bless you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you so all much. for tuning in and uh, and we'll be seen at the next session.